Welcome to the History and Focus channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one. An American soldier was photographed while inspecting a shocking collection of thousands of gold wedding rings on May 3rd, 1945 in Germany. These rings were taken from Jews by the Nazis and hidden in the salt mines of Heilbronn. The image captures a revealing moment at the end of World War II, highlighting the extensive looting and atrocities committed by the Nazis against Jews during the Holocaust. This sinister find reflects the magnitude of human suffering and the systematic brutality of Nazi persecution. A grim moment captured in a photograph showing a German soldier shooting a Ukrainian Jew during a mass execution in Vinitsia, Ukraine, between 1941 and 1943. The image is known as the last Jew in Vinitsia, with this text written on the back of the photograph, found in an album belonging to a German soldier. A group of Jews, including a child, being escorted from the Warsaw Ghetto by German soldiers. This photograph is not only a window into the horrors of the Holocaust, but also a crucial historical document, part of SS General Jürgen Stroop's report to his commander. Later, this image was used as evidence in the Nuremberg war crime trials in 1945. Unfortunately, such incidents were common in Nazi Germany after Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933. Jews and Jewish war veterans frequently faced persecution and intimidation by the Nazis. Even though he wore the Iron Cross, a symbol of bravery and service in World War I. The Jewish-German veteran was not protected from Nazi attacks. The image presents a moving historical record of the liberation of Jewish prisoners from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Germany by American forces in April 1945. Eyes of Hatred. This is a historic photograph of Josef Goebbels, the Nazi Minister of Propaganda, taken in Geneva in September 1933. The image was captured by Alfred Eisenstadt, a Jewish photographer. At the moment of the photograph, Goebbels was initially smiling, but his expression changed drastically when he was informed of Eisenstadt's Jewish identity. The image captures the instant Goebbels' demeanor turns into a look of profound hatred, revealing his visceral and ideological antipathy. This photograph has become a powerful representation of the anti-Semitic fanaticism and intolerance that marked the Nazi regime. Women survivors huddled in prisoners' barracks shortly after the Soviet forces liberated Auschwitz camp in Poland in 1945. These images show the survivors in precarious conditions, many still wearing the striped uniforms of the camp, symbols of the adversities and dehumanization they suffered. The liberation of Auschwitz did not mean an immediate end to the suffering of these women, but it marked the beginning of a long process of recovery and rebuilding their lives after the atrocities they faced. This photograph serves as a poignant reminder of the terrible living conditions in the concentration camps and the resilient spirit of the survivors. German soldiers react to images of concentration camps in 1945. The Nazi concentration camps, where millions of Jews, prisoners of war, and minorities were brutally exterminated, were largely unknown to the world and, surprisingly, to many Germans. The photos capture the moment German soldiers, some claiming ignorance of these camps, are confronted with the images and realities of what occurred. Their expressions show shock, disbelief, and in some cases, remorse. Photo of Czesława Kłoka, a 14-year-old Polish Catholic girl from Wolkoźlojeka, Poland. Seen here in this prisoner identification photo taken by Wilhelm Brasser while working in the photography department at Auschwitz. In December 1942, Czesława and her mother were deported to this Nazi extermination camp, where about 1.5 million people, mostly Jews, lost their lives during World War II. Sadly, both died within three months of their arrival. The photo, captured under terrible circumstances, shows Czesława visibly terrified. In a 2005 documentary, Brasser recalls the moment of the photo, describing how a guard brutally assaulted the young girl, who, despite the tears and blood, tried to compose herself. Brass felt deeply affected, but knew that intervening would be fatal for him. Photo of a victim of Nazi medical experimentation 
The arm of a victim shows a deep phosphorus burn at Ravensbrück, Germany, in November 1943. The photograph displays the results of a medical experiment involving phosphorus conducted by doctors at Ravensbrück. It took more than two weeks for the wound to heal. This photograph, taken by a camp doctor, was presented as evidence during the doctor's trial at Nuremberg. Starving and severely weakened prisoners were photographed at the Ebensee concentration camp in Austria on May 7, 1945. This camp was notoriously used by the Nazis to conduct experiments labelled scientific, which often resulted in torture and death. The image captures the deplorable state of the prisoners, whose emaciated bodies evidence the brutal and inhumane conditions they faced. This photo is a poignant testament to the atrocities committed at Ebensee, symbolising the extreme suffering experienced in concentration camps during World War II. Photo of the Buchenwald concentration camp in Thuringia, Germany, showing a striking moment of justice when a Russian survivor, newly liberated by the 3rd Armoured Division of the 1st US Army, identified a former camp guard. This guard was notorious for brutally beating prisoners during his service period. The scene captures the beginning of the accountability process for the horrific crimes committed in concentration camps, symbolising an important step in recognising and condemning the atrocities of the Nazi regime. German soldiers questioned Jews after the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943. In October 1940, the Germans began to concentrate Poland's Jewish population of over three million into overcrowded ghettos. In the largest of these, the Warsaw Ghetto, thousands of Jews died from rampant diseases and starvation. Even before the Nazis began their mass deportations from the ghetto to the Treblinka extermination camp, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was the first mass urban rebellion against Nazi occupation in Europe and occurred from April 19th to May 16th, 1943 starting after German troops and police entered the ghetto to deport the surviving inhabitants. The Jews, poorly armed and with few resources, fought bravely but were eventually defeated by German forces. After the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943, Nazi forces completely destroyed the ghetto. More than 56,000 Jews were captured. Approximately 7,000 were executed on the spot, while the remainder were deported to extermination or concentration camps. The photograph shows the rubble of the ghetto, the result of the demolition carried out by the German SS. During its few years of existence, the Warsaw Ghetto saw the death of about 300,000 Polish Jews, deeply marking the history of the Holocaust. Anne Frank in 1941. In August 1944, Anne, her family, and others in hiding were captured by the occupying German security forces and sent to a series of prisons and concentration camps. Anne died of typhus at the age of 15 in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. But her posthumously published diary made her a symbol of all Jews who died in World War II. Photo capturing the arrival and initial processing of a group of Jews from Carpatho-Ruthenia, a region annexed by Hungary in 1939, at the Auschwitz-Birkenau extermination camp in Poland in May 1944. This moment represents one of the many transports of Jews who were systematically sent to Auschwitz, where they faced inhumane conditions, and the majority did not survive. Another photo of Dwight D. Eisenhower. This time, he observed survivors demonstrating the torture methods used by the Nazis. This experience was deeply impactful. The survivors detailed and reenacted the horrific torture and execution techniques, providing Eisenhower and other military leaders and journalists present with a vivid and disturbing understanding of the inhumane treatment endured by the prisoners. Photo near Weimar, Germany. In the picture, we see a group of men and boys demonstrating to visitors, including military leaders and journalists, the inhumane conditions they were forced to sleep in at the concentration camp. They showed how they crammed into extremely confined and unsanitary spaces, often without adequate coverings and on overcrowded wooden beds or directly on the cold, hard ground. This visual demonstration was a powerful illustration of the daily suffering and lack of human dignity faced by prisoners in the Nazi camps, highlighting the brutality of the regime 
and the urgency of Allied intervention. Prisoners at the electric fence of the Dachau concentration camp celebrate American soldiers in Dachau, Germany. Dressed in typical blue and white striped prison uniforms, they express their joy and relief at seeing their liberators. Notably, they decorated their huts with flags of various nations, secretly made as they monitored the approach of the guns of the 42nd Rainbow Division, a sign that freedom was near. This image captures a moment of hope and victory amid the profound despair experienced in the concentration camps. The Auschwitz concentration camp, located in Poland, was targeted by an aerial bombardment. This attack was part of the Allies' efforts to hit strategic Nazi infrastructure. Although the decision to bomb or not bomb concentration camps was a subject of controversy due to the risk to the lives of the prisoners. The photograph of the event shows explosions and smoke covering parts of the complex, a moment when the war and its military operations directly impacted the infamous extermination camp, bringing even more chaos and destruction to a place already marked by unimaginable human horrors. On April 29, 1945, prisoners from the Dachau concentration camp were forced on a death march along Nördliche Menschner Street in Grunwald, Germany. As Allied forces approached, thousands of prisoners were moved from peripheral camps to deeper locations in Germany. During these marches, many died of exhaustion and those who could not keep up were executed on the spot. Joseph Kramer, the commander of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Belsen, was photographed handcuffed shortly after his arrest on April 28, 1945. Known as the Beast of Belsen, Due to his extreme brutality, Kramer was one of the most infamous Nazi war criminals. After the end of the war, he was tried for his horrific crimes, including the inhumane treatment of prisoners and mass murder. Kramer was sentenced to death and executed in December 1945, closing a dark chapter in Holocaust history and providing some measure of justice for his numerous victims. A photo of a significant visit to the Ordruf concentration camp in Germany that occurred when Dwight D. Eisenhower, Omar Bradley and George Patton, prominent figures of the American army, made a visit to the site on April 12, 1945. During the visit, they were confronted with the horrific evidence of Nazi crimes, including a pit with the charred remains of prisoners who had been brutally burned to death. This visit was crucial for Eisenhower and his colleagues, as they witnessed firsthand the atrocities committed, reinforcing the need to judge and punish those responsible. The impact of this experience was so profound that Eisenhower insisted on documenting everything so that future generations would never forget the horrors of the Holocaust. Photo during his visit to the Ordruf concentration camp in Germany in April 1945 where General Dwight D. Eisenhower witnessed various evidence of Nazi crimes, including a gallows used for the execution of prisoners. This encounter with the brutal realities of the Holocaust had a profound impact on Eisenhower. Dwight D. Eisenhower, accompanied by First Lieutenant Alephus J. Lython from Appleton, Wisconsin, who served as an interpreter, played a crucial role in obtaining first-hand information about the operations and horrors of the camp. Lytham questioned the guide, usually a survivor or prisoner still in the camp, allowing Eisenhower to hear first-hand detailed accounts of the atrocities committed. This interaction not only facilitated a deeper understanding of what occurred in Ordruf, but also ensured that this information was properly documented and later used to inform the world about the brutality of the Nazi concentration camps. After the liberation of Auschwitz camp by Soviet forces in January 1945, a photograph was taken showing a large number of suitcases that belonged to people deported to the camp. These suitcases, often labelled with the names of their owners, represent the disrupted lives and shattered hopes of prisoners who were forced to leave everything behind. This sombre image is a silent testament to the systematic stripping and dehumanization practiced in the Nazi concentration camps. Photo of a group of Hungarian Jews at the Auschwitz-Birkenau extermination camp in Poland. They were transported in cattle cars in a manner similar to the transportation of livestock, a common practice in the deportation of Jews during the Holocaust. 
The image captures the bleak reality of these prisoners as they disembark, exhausted and frightened, unaware of the tragic fate that awaited them. A photo of one of the many tragedies of the Holocaust unfolding at Auschwitz-Birkenau, Poland, as a group of Hungarian Jews was forced to walk toward the gas chambers. This fatal march was part of the Nazi regime's systematic extermination operation, aimed at the rapid and mass elimination of European Jews. The victims, unaware of their imminent and horrific fate, were often deceived with the promise of disinfection and bathing. The photograph of this march captures one of the darkest moments in history, where we can see everyone from adults to children. Jews deported to the Drancy transit camp near Paris, France, in 1942, on their last stop before the German concentration camps. Approximately 13,152 Jews, including 4,115 children, were detained by the French police forces, taken from their homes to the Velle de Heve, a cycling stadium in southwest Paris, in July 1942. Subsequently, they were transferred to Drancy, located northeast of the capital, and from there, deported to the east. Only a few managed to return after the war ended. During World War II, France was occupied by Nazi Germany starting in 1940. The French government at the time, known as the Vichy regime, collaborated with the Nazis, including in the persecution of Jews. This collaboration involved the French police, who assisted in the detention and deportation of Jews to concentration and extermination camps. Many of these acts were carried out under pressure and direct orders from the German occupiers, but there were also instances of initiative by French authorities. This cooperation is part of one of the darkest periods in French history and continues to be a subject of deep regret and historical analysis. A photo of former inmates of German concentration camps who later became citizens of Israel. Many survivors of Nazi concentration camps after World War II emigrated to what was then the British Mandate of Palestine and later, after 1948, became citizens of the newly established State of Israel. These individuals, who underwent extremely traumatic experiences during the Holocaust, often found in Israel a place to start anew, build families and contribute to society. The presence of former inmates among the Israeli population had a profound impact on the national character influencing policies, culture, and the country's collective memory of the Holocaust. Photo of a Jewish boy being summoned by German soldiers, likely to be taken to a concentration camp. His face shows an expression of fear and sadness, uncertain of what lies ahead. This photo is a powerful reminder of the inhumane Nazi ideals, where not even a child would be spared. 